everyone to a Roman lunch. I'm in the classic trattoria and I'm going to have some cacio e pepe, which is a rather simple dish, but it's filled with a lot of awesome history. According to Anthony Bourdain, it's known as one of the most perfect dishes Now it's deceptively simple. Here it takes a lot of art to make it just right. So here we are at Trattoria in the neighborhood of Monti and join me for a cacio e pepe. So let me show you just briefly the Trattoria so you know where we're at. It's a beautiful Trattoria. Enjoying some good food. Now, cacio e pepe, where does it come from? Well, before it gets too cold, I'm gonna bite into it. Hello, Summit, nice to see you here. Join me for a cacio e pepe lunch. Let's try this out. Yes, I'm back. I had to go live in the lower quality because there's bad service inside these restaurants. You know, I've already tried going to live three times in three different restaurants for cacio e pepe. Uh, I've eaten a lot of cacio e pepe, but I haven't shown it to you because of bad service in these restaurants. Not table service, I'm talking about uh, cellular service. All right, let's try this out. Mm. Wow. So Gatri Pepe has only four ingredients here is very important water core ingredient pretty easy to get especially in these parts some cheese and some pepper that's where the name comes from cacio which means cheese and specifically usually means pecorino cheese which is a cheap which means black pepper but it's only four ingredients this must be easy. Anyone can do this. Well, first it depends on the pasta. And here we're getting the torelli, torelli, I think it's pronounced. It is a pasta made with egg. So it's a little bit more chewier and much more thicker. I'm actually a huge fan of this pasta. I also love my carbonaras with this pasta. The other thing is, of course, you have to get good water. So you can't use kind of any mediocre water. Good natural water would be the best. Let me take another bite. Mm, magnifico. So, mm, the pasta itself is so juicy. Not juicy, that's the best word. But so chewy, it, it's al dente, so it has the little bit of bounce back. And then the pepper itself, the pepper really cuts through. It cuts through the salty, kind of strong, pungent cheese. A good pecorino is pungent in a good way. And I love pecorino for that. I'm a huge fan of sheep and goat cheeses. The other thing is, the, how the sauces all mix together in the sauce is really good. That means they know what they're doing because you can easily fail in this sauce because if you only have water, cheese to make your sauce and maybe like the black pepper, but black pepper is really contributing not too much to the sauce element, it's kind of hard. So where does this come from? Well, it has a very interesting history to it. Take another bite. Cheryl says, yeah, enjoy. I'm gonna make pasta today. That's it, says Susie. Oh yeah, 100% recommend making pasta today. And I recommend buying this type of pasta. Mm. Now the best way to combine it is from aga, aqua casata, which is sparkling water. You can get it very cheap here, usually. I only charge you about 150 euro for like this huge thing. Not like in America where they're charging 
This is only eight euro here. It's very inexpensive. Uh, hello, Lena. Nice to see you. Hello, Cheryl. Andrew says magnifique. Thank you so much, Andrew. I appreciate your advice of, uh, of that here in these restaurants, they're like in very old buildings and the buildings are not so conducive to service. So luckily I was able to go live. Yeah. I'm doing pasta with tomato and basil sauce, says K.O. The moment where you start crossing the line of tradition and going more into American territory, which by all means has a magic to it. Italian-American food is amazing. I love it. I grew up with it. But the moment you start putting a meatball into your pasta or some type of cooked meat, generally, like uh, pieces of steak or chicken, then you start crossing the line into American territory. And it's not so Italian from Italy. So where does this come from? Well, there's two stories. There's the story of legend. Shepherds that used to tend to their sheep in the Apennine Mountains in Italy would usually uh, be out and about in the mountains for food that would easily spoil. So they carried pasta and black pepper. Pepper and pasta wouldn't spoil. And of course, they would usually have access to water by using the natural mountain springs. But they, since they're tending sheep, would have access to fresh cheese. Cheese with the ingredients that don't spoil in order to have a very hearty meal late at night. And that's why uh, we have a cacio e pepe, according to legend. But there's a more reasonable assumption. Mm. Marcin says olive oil. No, oh, no. Don't put olive oil. It ain't gonna be a cacio e pepe if you start putting olive oil. It'll be an Italian, American style. Maybe pasta dish but don't put olive oil in this only needs water does it taste like carbonara LAC yeah it's it's almost the same taste as carbonara just less that's creamier the egg that's used to make the sauce in carbonara is a bit more creamier than this just a bit doesn't really to make too much of a difference the difference with the carbonara is that you end up having the ganciale which is the, basically the Italian bacon of sorts. It only tastes very similar to bacon. It's made from pork cheek. But this one's much more simpler. I think Bourdain said that this was the best dishes ever made of humankind. He was a gigantic fan of country pepper. So much so, he went to a restaurant uh, in the middle of the historic center of Rome and featured it. So the more reasonable tale of Cacio e Pepe is it came from the industrial sector. So Rome, like many other major cities in Europe, exploded in industry, especially during the 1900s. And a lot of the lower income families in Rome couldn't really afford any um, meats, any heavy ingredients. You ever wondered why Italian American cuisine is so meaty? You know, we have our meatballs, we have our chicken, we have a, we have the gigantic chicken parms, we have the veal parms. The reason that exists in America is because when the Italians came over, came over to America, to New York, and cities like Boston and Chicago, they were stunned by how inexpensive it was to buy fresh meat. Stunned because back in the homeland here in Italy, they couldn't, they couldn't buy fresh meat. They had to make this. So couldn't buy meat, they had to just make with dew, which was pasta, pepper, and pecorino cheese. Luckily the cheese is plentiful because the pecorino comes from this region of Italy, in Lazio. And it's a Phil, you say, I love that little intimate corner. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like it too. The restaurant is pretty big. There's, there's quite a bit of people. One thing I noticed, Italian restaurants during lunch are very quiet. <laughs> it, it's so different from like an American uh, cafe where things get loud in, in, uh, during lunch time. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the church eating lunch in a trattoria in Italy during lunchtime. Dinner, it's, it gets a lot more lively. So that's the more reasonable sunshine where it came from. But that's why in America, the Italian Americans end up just like putting everything with meat and cheese because they just had so much abundance. And it was so less expensive uh, to have meat and cheese. You know, American economy was different a hundred years ago that they just mixed everything together. But here, never really got there. Carmen says the food looks yummy. Oh yeah, so creamy. Mm. No feel. <clears throat> feel free to ask me any questions. Peel says, looks good, but can't do too many carbs. I'll be sleepy after. That's what cafe is for, coffee. That's why a good coffee is for after the meal. But I know what you mean. I'm a little bit carbed out, to be honest. Uh, I had to get Cacio Pepe, so I can show it to you at least once on a live video. And mission accomplished. Uh, now I can try the meats and the salads of Italy. I love Italian homemade pasta. Yeah, I'll fall. The pasta, definitely not the dried kind that you would get in most places in America. Here they make it fresh. What's your favorite Mediterranean seafood dish? Asked Wayne. That's a good question. I haven't had too many. Uh, in Greece, I really love the um, really love the octopus, the grilled octopus. Mm. You should have a glass of wine with that. It's a bit too early. It's very hot today. K uh, says uh, hot today. It's like ninety something degrees, and in, unlike in New York, where it does also get to ninety degrees, it's also humid like New York, but there is no clouds. <laughs> no clouds, so there's no shade. <laughs> it's a bit too hot for, for some alcohol. Hey James from New Zealand, welcome. How do you maintain your smell? Clifford, great question. I'm not sure if you've been to Italy. You'll notice, not that many people are big. Not that many people are big. Why is that? Um, a few reasons. The quality of the ingredients are very good. The food is much more fresher than the US. That means the cheese isn't as old as it gets in the US sometimes because industrialized cheese, or if you're importing cheese, it might be a few months old, uh, which is good with cheese if you're properly aging it. But if you're not properly aging it, you're losing more nutrients. And then the other thing is grains. Grains here, yes, there are carbs, but the carbs don't go down as heavy as they do in uh, the U.S. So that is the difference. That's it. Uh, that's the, the difference. As for me, I will do a lot of walking. So, yeah. People walk a lot like New Yorkers, Alessi. Yeah, they do. And have you ever been to Eastern European cities? That's Lane. Yeah, I have been to Eastern European cities. Mm. So let me so show you the sauce that accumulates at the end of it. Triangles because of the because of the service, the cellular service, but that's the sauce. You can see it right there. Wendy says you walk for miles. Yep. So, Dwayne, yeah, the only cities I covered of Eastern Europe on Urbanist has been uh, Bucharest. Bucharest has been the only one. Personally, I've traveled to Prague 
and Istanbul. Are portion sizes smaller than America? No. Well, it depends. Fancy restaurants in America actually don't serve you too much. So if you're having a good cacio pepe in America, it's gonna be about the same size, maybe even smaller. If you're eating at an Italian American restaurant that's more kind of a neighborhood joint, then uh, yeah, the food is going to be much larger. Or if you go to kind of most restaurants outside of the major cities, yeah, the food, food, food portions are gonna be bigger in America. Here, here are the small. How are your sneakers feeling today, says Gretchen. I just switched back to my old sneakers. I couldn't do it with the, those uh, new sneakers. So I gotta find a way to expand them. Gretchen is referring to some new sneakers I bought that are so tight. They, I tried them on, they, they were so tight that um, I just can't wear them. I just gotta expand them somehow. All right, so I'll stick around for a few more uh, moments. Let me know if you have any last questions about Cacho Pepe or about restaurant culture. I've already experienced Rome three times, so I can speak a little bit about my experiences in uh, dining out in Rome. When you're a traveler, generally it's okay. It's a bit easier during lunchtime. At dinner time, especially at these older style trattorias, especially in the more neighborhood ones, here we are in Monte, so it's not so neighborhood. So for example, for content, but if you were in a little bit in the other parts, maybe like the neighborhood of Prati, which is the first video I showed you, those are neighborhood joints, neighborhood restaurants. So the people attending there are locals, and the locals tend to go there multiple times a week. They uh, do reservations, or sometimes you know the restaurant just knows someone so well, they know they come so and so every single night, they end up just having the table for them. So you might encounter a solo traveler, a little bit tough, or even if you're a couple, or with a friend, a little bit tough to find the table in some of those neighborhood places. So you gotta make reservations. Same thing is Russia says, am I Persian? No, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican. What is the traditional Roman alcoholic drink? Asked Andrew. Great question. So, non-alcoholic, you can get still water or sparkling water. They'll usually put on the bottle. It's not really normal for a restaurant to give you tap water, even if you ask for it. I think it's due to regulations, maybe it's due to tradition, not necessarily because of the water quality, but they just won't serve you tap water. I think it's just because a lot of restaurants just don't have filters. But when it comes to alcohol, you can have a aperitivo, aperitif, I mean, aperitif, the main meal drink, or a digestif. Kind of a spritz, you can have like a Aperol spritz, um, there's a few other types of spritz. You can have those as kind of the appetizer. For the main meal, when you're having any type of meal, maybe a cacio e pepe or anything else, usually it's rather weird in Italian culture to drink a sugary or strong, bittery cocktail during the meal. So if you order a Negroni while you're eating a cacio e pepe, the waiter might look at you weird. And if they're really proud of their food, they might not even know. Italians are, you know, they provide good service, but there's certain food taboos here. So what do you have in terms of alcohol with your food? You usually only have two things, beer or wine. That's what you have with your food. After your food, then it's a digestif. And digestif are a bunch of different things, including limoncello and also um, uh, amaro, which means a bitter. So these bitter Italian customs. So that's what you 
You can also order like an Irish coffee. I assume no one's gonna give you a hard time if you order a cocktail afterwards, if they have cocktails. Chiel says, what else did you order besides the pasta? I ordered a vegetable soup to start, and it's really good. I needed some veggies in my life. You know, the, the one challenge here in Rome is it's so tempting to just eat cacio e pepe and carbonara and uh, amatricia, I think it's called. Uh, that other pasta made with pecorino cheese and tomato sauce. It's, it's tempting to order or just eat pizza, or just eat trapazinos, or just eat paninis. I'm tempted to just do all that. What I learned here is give up and just eat the sweets, because it's gonna be hard to find kind of what I'm used to for a breakfast, which is avocado toast, or eggs, uh, omelets. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult once if I go to more of kind of a touristic American restaurant. So breakfast, I just learned to kind of just go with the flow, have some good sweets for breakfast. Um, but <laughs> when it comes to lunch or dinner, go for the cheesy carbs, which by all means go for it. You know, you're in Italy. But for me uh, personally, right now this meal is going to make me feel rather heavy. Uh, walking around weather so generally when I'm not doing the live video I now seek out more kind of the either meatier dishes that are just pure meat uh, or salads that some places might have more salads than others it's not like quite like Greece where there's a lot of salads here's a little bit less but yeah you can, you can find good food here uh, aside from the pasta it just takes a little bit more kind of experimentation I'll report back to you. I'm gonna really experiment, kind of just. <laughs> I think this is my final cacio e pepe for a while. Uh, I'm gonna experiment, do non pasta ditches. I missed the Sistine Chapel because I did not know the. It's in the Vatican Museum, James. Yeah. It's within the Vatican Museum, the entrance. Sad that you missed it. That sucks. Do you eat fresh fruit? Says Phil. I do. At home, in normal day life, I eat a lot of fresh fruit. I eat uh, bananas. I like pineapple. I eat a lot of fresh fruit. Here in Rome, you'll find several places that you can find fresh juice. You can easily find fresh orange juice almost in every single cafe bar. Or fresh lemon juice, I think. Uh, when it comes to other fruits, it's a little bit more trickier than, say, a Greece or a Mexico. Just a bit more trickier. Hey, I tried to make this and it was awful. I don't like plain pasta. I need garlic or something on this, says Babu. Babu, great comment. What you require is the pepper. Because, remind me where you're watching from, Babu. But most North America has access to very bad quality black of like a salt or even salt is defined. Black pepper isn't like a dill weed. All dill weed tastes. You know, I don't know. What's another good spice? All spice. All spice generally tastes all the same. Or, or cinnamon generally tastes all the same. But black pepper is one of those uh, herbs or one of those uh, spices that has a whole variety of tastes. So. Black pepper can be really punchy and not acidic. Problem is with American pepper is that it's not so tasty and also could be very acidic, so it just ends up giving you heartburn. So that's the downside of pepper in North America. So if you can somehow go to a specialty shop or a specialty spice shop and find
Alicine says, I just had a fabulous lemon drop ice espresso, which is homemade lemon syrup and pepper with some espresso. Yeah. Babu says, I use fresh mixed peppercorns. Even if the peppercorns are fresh in the US or, or Canada, they still might not be so flavorful. Um, you can use peppercorns, but even the peppercorns are kind of industrialized and they all taste kind of the same. So I would, I would recommend I would recommend trying a pepper from a good spice shop nearby. Trust me, the difference will be will be immense. And also liberally use the black pepper. Liberally. But I get it, some people really love their extra condiments. But right now, what I'm tasting here is super flavorful. It's filled with flavor. It is not plain whatsoever tasting. Like some seafood pastas can be rather plain because of course they're only putting some lemon and maybe a little bit of butter. Uh, but this is filled with flavor. Panajotis asked this, uh, uh, says, toast the pepper too. Yeah, so here what these restaurants do is they toast the pepper beforehand and the pepper releases the aromas and the oils. In, in terms of payment, LAC, you can pay ca you can pay credit almost every restaurant, you can pay credit card. I think the villages of Italy. Um, but when it comes to cafes, like cafe bars, it, they might accept credit card, but it's kind of a hassle to pay for credit card. They're so busy and they are such quick service. You're better off just carrying some change. And sometimes they're just straight up cash only at cafe bars or like pastry shops or bakeries. They're cash only. So I would recommend carrying a little bit more cash than you would say in Greece or in Paris or in London, where it's a lot easier to pay with card all the time. Is Parmesan mixed in your pasta? Um, Alicine. I don't think so. I don't think they added Parmesan. Usually Cacio e Pepe does not have Parmesan. Usually. Some people might experiment with it. A little bit more liberal with their Parmesan mixed with Pecorino. I'm almost all done. For a cafe and a dessert. Andrew says, I want to discuss how important it is to not have cappuccino at lunch. Yes. Mighty Bull, thank you so much for a $10 super chat. I appreciate you, Mighty Bull. Coffee and dessert here. Um, as we finish off this meal, or um, do you want to see that later on in a different place? Vote now and forever hold your peace. So this was eight euro, eight euro for the Cacio Pepe. Don't forget to wipe your plate with bread. Bread they charge you one euro, which which isn't too bad, but um, I've had enough. <laughs> enough carbs <laughs> not for dietary reasons mostly it's just you know a carb heavy meal kind of makes you feel like sluggish this doesn't make me feel too sluggish like sometimes Amer Italian American pastas can make me feel but yeah now I thought Cacio Pepe was just a restaurant says Nina <laughs> yeah it's a famous restaurant in New York
hear a lot of Spanish in the background. Yeah, there's a lot of Spaniards here. A lot of countries are still closed, and a lot of countries are closing now. So, yeah, you don't hear other languages. You don't hear too many Germans. You don't hear Scandinavians. It's not that many. Babu, there is a ketchup bottle here. Yeah. Susie, send the hundred stars. Thank you. Dolce. Yes, what do you have for Dolce? Cream caramel, tiramisu, panna cotta, chocolate. Uh, caramelo. And a uh, un ca un cafe. So I'm so excited to feature a panacotta. Uh, I will feature a tiramisu, but there's a place close to the Spanish steps that's known as the best tiramisu in the entire, entire uh, Rome. So I'm so excited to show you that at some point. So tipping in Rome is usually, some places will charge you a cupureto, a coperto. Please let me know how it's pronounced. Coperto, I think it's pronounced. And that is a kind of a service charge, which is very little. It's not that much. Maybe it's a few euro or less. If you go to a cafe, cafe bar and you sit outside, they'll charge you that cuperto. They'll, you know, usually a cafe is like one euro. If you sit outside, it's gonna be two euro. If you get yourself like a more fancier drink and a cornetto, rather than spending only three euro, you're gonna spend like six or seven euro. Uh, so that's that's the service fee for some of these places. But beyond that, tipping, not really. You give tipping if it's extremely exceptional service. Um, but since you're more of the touristy areas, people do give like 10% tip or whatever you have, the change. I think it's more custom to just give the change that you get. Co coperto. Coperto. Thank you so much. Coperto. It says Babu. Oh yes, Babu, it does. Oh yes, it does. <laughs> That's sacrilege for an Irish person uh, not to like Guinness, says Nina. <laughs> what are you referring to, Nina? Do they serve decaf coffee anywhere? Yeah, go to some cafe bars, they will have decaf. Not all of them, though. Not all of them. It's not as common as the U.S. or or Paris. You can find more decaf in those two cities. London as well. Here, I don't know, maybe like forty percent. Hey, Alicine left. Uh... She says, "Ariello." He sings opera in Italian now. <laughs> Indeed, I'm going to start singing the, the Rossini uh, opera, The Barbers of Seville, one of the best operas. Being here, yes. Do you still tip if they have a service charge? It would just be change? Maybe, at most. Do you need to ask for permission to record inside? Alexei? No. Um, I'm only recording myself, A. And then B, uh, I'm not really ruining anyone else's experience. I'm speaking pretty low, you know, kind of. I usually choose, if I can, I choose the tables a little bit out of the way. My sense in, in uh, filming these restaurants. If a restaurant owner has not big issue with me filming, then, you know, I will turn it off or I will go somewhere else. Which has happened a few times, but it's been rare, but it's happened a few times. And then when they do that, I'll respect them, just kind of go away. Usually if they really don't want me to film, which has happened a few times, not in Italy, but it's happened in America, uh, I generally don't even want to eat there. <laughs> I'll just go. 
do you get funny looks for eating alone says I feel without the camera not really like it's not too weird if, you know uh, just normal dining alone uh, with the camera yes <laughs> quite a lot that's it This so panacota, which is a cream, and it has some cam caramelo on top of it. Yeah, I'm so excited to try this out. It's a classic, classic Italian dessert that you can get all around. And of course, a good cafe. Look at that crema. So it's normal to give it a stir, which I don't put sugar. It's normal to give it a stir before you go. And that's to mix in all the flavors because the crema, the crema has like a lot of flavor in it. You met so far, says Nina. Ooh. You know, that's a good question, Nina. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this live video. Um, to be honest, uh, Italy is a bit different from like uh, a Greece or a Mexico. Uh, I haven't met that many random people. Alright, let's dress up. Ooh, the caramel is parted. Look at this. This tastes like a, if a nona made it. It tastes very homemade. Not, it doesn't even taste like a restaurant. It tastes very homemade. Thing. What's something you would expect from a trattoria? The, the caramel is intense. Oh my God, that's a crazy strong caramel. Wow. The pan I barely can taste the panacota. Mm. Nina says good homie, yeah, good homie. You know, I was I was expecting kind of um, you know, there's like a restaurant taste and then there's like a homemade taste. This tastes like a homemade taste. It, it, this tastes like something my own grandmother would make. Except rather than panacota, it would be uh, what's called in Puerto Rico maicena, which is made up of um, just milk and sugar. So it's really good. It's very soft and creamy. It almost tastes like a yogurt, but just a little bit more cheesier. More creamier, more sugary. It has that kind of toasted taste to it. Nice and toasted to the taste to it. Mm. Very toasty. That's an intense caramel. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Gotta wash this down with some coffee. So, Marcin says too much sugar. I think it might be a little bit too much sugar. It's really good, but it's super sweet. It's insanely sweet. I should not. I, 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 if I were to order it again, I would not order it with caramel. I would just order it plain. So it tastes a lot like a flan, or it tastes like a like a creme brulee, a little bit. So, in Italy as opposed to America, England, France, to a certain extent. Please confirm me with me with France. Uh, the Caribbean, South America, Mexico. All those other countries serve a double shot of espresso if you go to an espresso bar. Here in Italy, it's only one single shot. Never really a double shot. That would be rather odd if you order a double shot. It would be called a doppio.
LAC says pasta and sugar overload. You need a siesta for this. Yeah, LAC. I think this is why I have been um, very tired during the middle of the day. <laughs> I usually don't nap in the middle of the day, but this this Rome trip has made me crash during the middle of the day. Wendy says Ariel doing a great job. Also, glad you think so. Looks luscious, Ariel. Bravo, like your mother or grandmother used to make it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me know if you are Puerto Rican and ever tried maicena. It has a very similar taste to it. Maybe in Puerto Rico, I will show you at one point soon. I'll show you real maicena. That's a lot of caramel. A bit too much. Dole and went in London today after last week's heat wave, says Charles. Oh no. I don't know what it is, but I like Dominican coffee. Dominican coffee, yeah, will be a. If they do it with espresso. Countries do it with filtered coffee. Uh, espresso is different, it's a smaller amount. So you might think to yourself, oh, yeah, Italians barely drink coffee. No, it's still a pretty caffeinated nation. Instead of just drinking two of these like you would in america you know one in the morning maybe one for lunch and you're done with your coffee or if you're like finnish uh who drinks an amazing uh, intense amount of coffee you would drink one for breakfast one for lunch and then one for early dinner <laughs> That's but in italy you have like four or five of these throughout the day for breakfast, accompany your cornetto or your um, maritoso. For lunch, after you eat this carbonara or you eat some other type of kind of dish. And then for uh, with your coworkers or meet up with a friend real quickly. At the espresso bar, you have another one. And then maybe you go out again as you're leaving work and then you go out again. <laughs> when you have dinner, and then you have your espresso to end your dinner. How many of that do you need to do a 24 hour live stream? Six or seven? <laughs> roll, on, roll on, maybe more. How many cups do you think, Ariel? I've been averaging five cups per day. Than I would in, in America. Because coffee is so good here. I'm not sure how many, how much the normal Roman takes, but I think it might be like four or five or six. Maybe four or five would probably be more than a generous assumption. Babu says, I don't drink coffee every day, it overwhelms me fast. But not only in Rome, accumulation of Santorini and Thessaloniki, it counts that you make you tired. This is Phil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Phil. I love your facial expressions when you eat and tell us a story, says uh, Marina. Oh, Marina, so glad. There's espresso longo too, which is uh, two doses of espresso in one cup. Yeah, I was wondering what is a longo? Thank you so much for specifying. Um, I usually order doppio. I was under the impression that longo was actually uh, espresso shot pulled more. So that means it has more water. It's not necessarily a double shot. They're using the same as a single shot in terms of coffee grounds, but they're just pulling it for longer. I think that might be a longo panajotas here in Italy. You probably have to brush your teeth after all that sugar, says Babu. Indeed, Babu. That's where sparkling water comes in handy. Italians have espresso. <laughs> have espresso in their baby bottles, no milk, <laughs> says Alicine. So if you are a little kid, uh, you can order uh, cafe latte, which is just one little tiny shot of espresso like this, but with a bunch of milk. And they give that to like younger kids. Maybe if you're like 14 years old, they'll give you a, you can order cafe latte. Don't order a latte, because if you order a latte, like you would in America, they'll just serve you milk, because latte means milk. They'll just give you a cup of milk. Maybe you warmed up, if you're lucky. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. How do you sleep with all that caffeine? 
I generally don't drink coffee after like 4 or 5 p.m. Here, it's been a little bit later because I do the customary drinking espresso after the heavy meal. But there's so many carbs that I'm not gonna be more awake <laughs> by drinking the coffee. I'm just gonna balance myself out from the sleepiness of all the carbs of a good dinner here in Italy. Babu says, latte fresca, they walk in the cow. If you want, if you, if you're in the, maybe in the specific village, they might do that. Puerto Ricans are immune to coffee, says so the peace scarf. Yes, P Puerto Ricans drink a very strong coffee. I've been drinking mushroom coffee lately, says Gretchen. Ooh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I also drink on mushrooms. Marilyn says, sorry, Rick Steves? Are you calling me Rick Steves, Marilyn? Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you always for pressing that like button and also becoming a member. Give hearts to Marilyn for becoming a member. <laughs> if I'm giving Rick Steve vibes, it's because, yeah, he does this. He, he does a radio show where he talks about the in intricacies of of uh, culture in a place. And I think it's a worthy conversation to have. You know, sometimes people don't care to talk about the culture because they might not see it so important. They might see that every culture is the same. They might be of the kind of sort of person of like, oh, we're all just humans. We're all Earth. <laughs> There's no differences between us. Some people might be a bad thing to have differences. Diversity is what makes us a really beautiful planet. So I think it's as beautiful to discuss intellectually and explore intellectually those differences, not out of uh, you're different from me, I'm different from you, um, not in that kind of finger pointing way, but in a more um, cohesive way, in a way of kind of getting to know your fellow man and woman and people of any gender. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Slam that like button if you want to see more videos. Become a supporter if you want to see two bonus videos inside the Vatican, uh, which will be posted on Monday, one of them. And then also supporters, patreon.com slash urbanist. Patreon.com slash urbanist, yeah. Or press that become a supporter button on Facebook or that join button on YouTube. And I'll be back later tonight inside the Colosseum. Oh yeah, we're going inside where <laughs> Maximus from the movie Gladiator would have yelled. People think he yelled there, but he actually didn't yell in that Colosseum. But I'm gonna yell it anyway. Are you not entertained? <laughs> we're going to that Colosseum. It's like it's like right there. Uh, I'll see you at 6 p.m. everyone, or just uh, maybe a few minutes, a few minutes after 6 p.m. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Buonasera, amici.